Thank you very much, Judith. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. So I'm going to be talking to you about two very key skills that we believe you should have or aspire to develop as you grow into young, successful Ghanaians or global citizens. But even before I do that, I want to just thank AMA and the Obasima Foundation team for this platform because we have the opportunity to meet very important young women and men to talk to you. We don't take that opportunity for granted. So, Amma, um, I think we're in the north, so we'll say Nagode. Networking, I'm going to answer a few of your questions. So, a few questions that I think you should know about networking. The first thing is, what is networking? If you think about a spider, and a spider trying to get to a particular point, think of a spider's web. The spider doesn't just go from point A to point B. The spider has interconnected dots in this web. In the same way as young people, as human beings, we are interconnected with other people and situations. If you want to achieve anything in life, you would need people to achieve that goal. And that's why networking is important. So we didn't arrive on, on Earth and found, find that we are just one, one person living on Earth. We are seven billion people in this world. And that means that to achieve the goals and aspirations that we have, we need people, isn't it? So if there was Obasima summits coming to UDS, but there was nobody sitting here, who would we talk to? No one. Okay, even if we decide to have a digital conference or a virtual conference, we need people to be part of that event to make it a success. So networking is important primarily because as human beings, we need other human beings to succeed. There's a saying that um, goes like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with people. And that's one of the funda fundamental reasons why you are required to be open to the thought of networking and developing networking as a key skill to succeed. If I look at the people sitting behind me who I'm on the days with, I know all of them. I met Jifa just recently, but I now know her. If I ever want anything that Jifa can provide support on, it will be easy for me to talk to Jifa because at least I've met her twice on Obasima. If I didn't know Jifa, but I know that she's an expert at what she does, and I want her to support me on a project I'm working on, starting the conversation from not knowing her at all will be more difficult than starting from the conversation from, oh, hello, Jifa, remember we met at Obasima Summit. Isn't it? So that's the thing. Networking is important because in trying to achieve the goals that we have, it's important that we realize that the people that we need need to also know us as much as we know them. Okay, so that's one of the, the reasons why networking is important, that people are essential to help us achieve our goals. And then the other thing is, if you think about networking, it's not just about collecting business cards and pictures, because I know that after today's event, you meet some people and you want to take pictures with them, right? But that's not all there is to networking. Networking is also about you building relationships with these new people that you meet. And I want you to think about all of the people in your network as social capital. So if you want to start a business, you would need a number of things. You would need your capital to start, you would need human resource, you would need the idea. But one of the key things that you also need to succeed in life is social capital, so the people that you know. So think about networking as your investment into building social capital. Then to the third question, why or how do I network? Very simple, start from where you are. Start here, start today. So the people you are sitting beside, have you met the lady beside you? Do you know her name? Okay. So please, in one minute, just talk to the person beside you. Don't remove your mask and spread any, any type of gems. 
But meet the person, ask them their name, get to know them, and after today, you may want to be in touch with them. And I will tell you how to go about networking beyond meeting them the first time. So please do that. 60 seconds. Don't be shy. The gentlemen, some of you are being very stiff. Talk to someone, ask them their name. The first and the most important thing is what is your name? You can introduce yourself as well. Okay, so start from where you are. That's a key thing. The next important thing about how to network, okay, are you done? Yes, yeah, so come back to me. How to network, you introduce yourself with confidence. When I said introduce yourself, I saw some people giggling. He, 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 he. Because you are shy. Learn how to introduce yourself with confidence. Okay? It doesn't matter how young you are or how inexperienced you are. When you mention your name, put power in it. When you mention your name, put confidence in it. Don't say your name like, oh, my, hello, my name, is, my name is Petra. And then the person says, pardon? Or somebody will say, eh? Mention your name with confidence. I am Petra Abba Asamoah. Mention it clearly, boldly. It's important to establish a relationship from a position of strength. Don't bring yourself into a small package when you're actually a big package. And when Judith was coming onto the stage, I was recording here, and I've posted it on my WhatsApp, and I've said that big things actually come in small packages. Have you met my colleague Judith? So it doesn't matter how small you are, or how short, or how big, or how large. Mention your name with confidence. It's, important, it's an important tool in building your network. Now I'm going to talk about a few things you must not do when you're building a network. Because I've encountered several young people in the last couple of years, and I find that they make certain mistakes that you can avoid. And I don't want to assume that you know. I want to actually help you so that you don't make these mistakes. The first thing is don't make your networking attempt about money. For a lot of young people, the assumption is that when they meet someone who is influential, you're going to help them solve all of your, their problems. So immediately you meet someone who you think maybe is an influential person in society. The morning after you've met them, the next thing you're asking for is money for school fees, hostel fee, money for books, um, and just generally asking for things. If you do that, you limit yourself to some very dangerous relationships. So don't make networking just be about money, and don't make it only about you getting, 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 getting. Second thing is know the difference between platonic relationships and romantic relationships. Networking does not mean that every single woman you talk to as a young man is going to be your girlfriend or your wife in future. In the same way, young women, when you meet men, it doesn't mean that every man who talks to you, who asks you for your name, likes you. Sometimes young women, when someone meets you, maybe at the bus station or at the airport or somewhere, they make they ask you, oh, hello, young lady, what's your name? Then you just frown because you assume that he's coming to ask me for my number and he likes me. Open up your mind. Not every man would want to, to know you or be your friend romantically. In building a social network, you need to be open to meeting new people. And you need to know that there are differences between platonic relationships and romantic relationships. So gentlemen, please realize that. Ladies, also please realize that. Number three is don't hold on to toxic relationships because you are expecting some future benefits. Some of you have relationships and friendships that you know are not helping you now. They are abusive friends. You have friends who are always talking down at you, but you are always thinking that, mm, her family is rich, oh, maybe in future she will help me. If that relationship is dehumanizing you, you need to think about what to do with it. Number four, in building an effective network, establish boundaries. You have to know what you will do and what you will not do. 
You cannot discuss every single thing with everybody, every person you meet. So if we just establish contact today, even though you might like me and want me to be your friend or your mentor, there are certain things that you don't necessarily have to tell me. You have to determine what type of information you will share with people in your network. So there's, there's a, a, a reason why you create boundaries in your life. And those boundaries are to protect you as well as to protect the other people that you interact with. And number five, in developing a good network, you have to learn how to be a good conversationalist. A good conversationalist is someone who knows how to have interesting conversations. Some people are very boring. Even when they are chatting with you, they are boring. And so to, to avoid that, being knowledgeable helps you become a good conversationalist. Because if you don't have any information about anything going on in the world or around you, what are you going to chat with your friend about? Or this new person that you've met? So it's important that you build your repertoire of information so that you can be a good conversationalist. And the final thing I'm going to say is when you are chatting with people, especially people you are trying to build a network with, don't waste time. I always get messages on Facebook or LinkedIn or all the other um, social media platforms. So maybe today we've met. Then Monday morning, I get a message from Akosia. Hello, Petra. I say, hello, Akosia. Then two hours later, Akosia comes back. How are you, Petra? I'm very well, thank you. So it will take me another two hours to come back to Akosia. So we'll be doing hello, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. For two weeks. Busy people don't have time for that. So if you want to connect with influential people, when you're sending them a message, you go straight to the point. We don't need the, hello, Petra, how are you? Has your dog eaten? How, you, how are your children? How is the weather in Accra? How is Akosombo Textiles faring? Are you achieving your targets? All of that is not necessary. Go straight to the point in your message. I give you my number. The first time you want to approach me, go straight to the point. Good morning, Petra. My name is Akosia. We met at Obasima Summit in UDS. I'm very happy to have met you. I'd like to interact with you further. These are my questions. Or I would like to ask you about A, B, C, D. Very recently, I had a young lady who called me. And for 25 seconds into that call, she was saying, Hello, Petra. How are you? That's how I was hearing it all. Because all the things she was asking me was a waste of time. I wanted to know what's the purpose of this call. Why have you called me? Because the thing is, you need to also gauge your relationship with the person. If I call Ama, we have an existing relationship. I can spend a few seconds asking her, Chale, Ama, how are you doing? How's, how is um, work? How is the family? But if I don't have a relationship with Ama, I shouldn't spend too much time beating around the bush. Okay, so you go straight to the point and approach the issue very, very quickly. And that should help you. The final thing I want to talk about when it comes to networking is the mnemonic network. So N-E-T-W-O-R-K. In networking, the N is for new relationships. Think about meeting new people. The E is for existing relationships. You have to think also in your network the existing friendships and relationships you already have, those people also form part of your network. So people you meet in school, people you meet, meet in church or at the mosque or wherever you go, those people are part of your network. I was talking about the people on the days. I know everybody there. Um, can I call you Kotoro? <laughs> so Mr. John Osea Kotoro was my mate in Legon. We did philosophy and political science together. And I started selling books, writing and selling books recently. I was just teasing him that he's my sales distributor for the northern region. Because every time I've written a book, he's the one who helps me sell the books in this part of Ghana. So please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much, John. And now we've met here. So he's an existing relationship that I already have. I'm not now going to meet him. Do you understand? 
The T, so new, N is for what? E is for what? The T is trust. You have to build trust. To be a valuable member of any network, you have to be somebody who is trustworthy. Don't be a liar and a thief. Don't be someone we don't know. When they say black, they mean gray or they mean blue. Let your word be your bond. Okay? So build trust. It's important that you build trust. So we've done E, we've done T. We've done E, we've done T. What's the next letter? W. W is for work. In building a network, it's work. You cannot be unconscious and flippant about it. You need to be intentional. So just a few days ago, a young woman who I mentor reached out to me and said, she's just recently got a job and she's find, trying to find business from some particular companies. And I said to her, what have you done? She said she sent out letters. I told her, letters don't really work these days. It's relationships that matter. So let's find out your list and see if we know anyone there who we can introduce you to. And now you also have to be active in trying to get to know people. So I told her about an event that was happening the day after. I got her an invitation and she went for the event. Out of the list of about 10 or 15 companies she was trying to target, she met two very important people at that event that she's going to try and prospect from. So you need to work at it. If you work in a company and you're trying to, to sell, you have to be intentional about meeting new people. And don't just sit down and think that it will happen. It doesn't happen by chance. So networking is an active activity and that's why it's even a verb it's not a, a passive thing you have to work at it what's the next letter o is for originality to be an effective person in any network you need to be conscious that there's something about you that you bring to the table and keep that thing original. Don't try to be like everybody else. Baba mentioned it. Yes, you admire Baba. You admire Mr. Koto. You admire Petra or you admire Jifa or Ama. But be yourself. Let there be something about you that you keep, that you consistently bring to the table. Don't vanish into somebody else's shadow. It's a nice thing to admire people, but be yourself. There's something about you that you have to keep for yourself. What's the next letter? R is relationships. Networking is about relationships. And for every relationship to succeed, you need to invest time and effort. As a young person, you'll be thinking, what do I have to offer? You have a lot of things to offer. Think about anything that you can do that the other person can do and give off your time. One of the ways of building relationships, volunteering to help people, it helps. What's the next letter? K, keep at it. Be consistent and keep trying. And that is how you build a network. So let's go over the, the letters. N is for what? E is for what? T, W, O, R, and K, clap for yourselves, you're good students. I'm going to, in the next five minutes, talk about public speaking. And public speaking is another skill that we want you to develop because it's important for you to succeed. Whether you are coming to stand in front of a group like I am doing today, or you are discussing in your group, your discussion group, or you are in your class, all of us at different points in time exercise the skill of public speaking. Is there anybody who has never spoken to a group before? You've never spoken to a group before? Okay, so we've all done it. And there are a few things that you should know about being a good public speaker. One is that it comes with practice and it comes with time. So I didn't just wake up one day and I'm able to do what I'm doing now by chance. There was a time when, when I'm about to speak, I'll have a very, very serious sense of rumbling tummy. I want to go to the washroom. I'll be so tense and so nervous. There were even times where just before I go on stage, I would definitely have to go to the bathroom because I would be so nervous that everything in me would just be 
mixing and mixing and being confused. So it's a, it's a journey, okay? For some people who are very vibrant and sociable and extroverted, it might come to you easily. But for others, it might not. So wherever you are on the continuum, you need to realize that it's a journey of learning and practice. There's something called persuasion in public speaking that I want to leave you with. To be an effective public speaker, there are three aspects of persuasion you should know. The first one is the ethos, E-T-H-O-S. The ethos talks about your credibility as the public speaker. Who are you and why are you the one talking about that issue? If we had an issue with water on UDS campus and we are all worried about it, then we come to a meeting with the SRC and somebody is introduced to us to come and talk to us about the problem. But the person who has been introduced to us is a level 100 student who just came onto campus. Do we think that person is the best person to address the issue? The person doesn't have the credibility to speak to the issue. So when you're, being, when you're engaged in any form of public speaking, ask yourself, who am I and why am I speaking about this issue? That's why it's important that before you accept to talk about something, you must ask yourself that question and you must try and communicate that ethos to your audience. So in the introduction that Jifa gave on Baba, for instance, she spoke about the fact that Baba works with Mahogany Consult, which is a communications and PR consultancy. That should tell you that Baba understands communication, she understands branding, and she is the right person to talk to you about it. But if she introduced Baba and said, oh, Baba is um, a marriage counselor in her church, and she's a volunteer in ICGC, she does very well, you'll be asking yourself, so why she come to talk to me about branding? Isn't it? So the first thing about persuasive public speaking is the ethos. The second thing is the pathos. Pathos, P-A-T-H-O-S, is the emotional side of persuasion. To be an effective public speaker, you need to connect to your audience's emotions. Connect with something that they feel good about. Know what you can say to connect with them. In politics, that is propaganda. What propaganda thrives on. They will push it and push it and push it. And when you finish listening to them, you are so upset with the other political party. Jifa knows what I'm talking about. So that's the pathos, the emotional side of things. They will tell you things that will drive your heart. If you want to be an effective public speaker, you need to connect to people's emotions. You touch them where they feel it. If I want to talk to the nurses here about healthcare in Ghana, and I want to talk to them about malaria, I will start by saying that, do you know that every five minutes, one child dies of malaria in Ghana? And I'll put my heart and my soul into it. And they'll be nodding their heads and they'll be very excited because I want them to go out there and make a difference. So the emotional connection is important in public speaking. And the last thing about persuasion is the logos, L-O-G-O-S. If you're going to be an effective public speaker, then your content, the letter, of what you are saying must also be credible. Don't come and give us useless uh, information that is not, doesn't have any facts, doesn't have any logic. So you come with information that is credible. So you, the speaker, must be credible and qualified. You must connect to your audience emotionally and the information that you are giving must be also credible. The last thing I'm going to say is to be an effective public speaker, you must know your audience. Know who you are speaking to. So you know the language of your audience. You know what motivations they have, what they want to aspire to. The second thing is know your content. Don't decide that you want to speak about something and two minutes to time, you, that's when you are going to do your research. Let the content move from your head to your heart. I am talking to you, not looking at my phone, even though I have all my notes on my phone because this information is in my heart now. I've talked about it on a number of occasions and it has moved from my head to my heart. So even if you call me in five minutes, all I need to do is to just pause, reflect, and I will still be able to tell you. So know your, your audience, know your content, and the third thing I'm going to say is know yourself. For all of us, there are things that trigger us, that help us be better, and there are, there are things that 
would make us not do our best. If you're the type of person that can only function on a heavy, full stomach, you have to eat, what, a fat bowl of tozafi before you can function. Don't go and do a public event when you are hungry. Eat well. So know yourself. Know what your triggers are and what will make you do your best. If you know that you're a Muslima and you have to wear your, your mayafi to make you feel confident and in the right place, don't allow somebody to make you not wear it because that is what they would accept. Because you might feel uncomfortable, isn't it, whilst you're doing it. So know your audience, know your content, and know yourself. Thank you very much.